From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on the new news. I'm Diane Parker. Miller has the holiday forecast, plus bureaucracy is getting in the way of rebuilding for homeowners along Montana's flooded rivers. But first... It's a big day politically in Wyoming as two separate debates kick off tonight at 7. Congresswoman Liz Cheney is debating Harriet Hageman and three other challengers. Hageman is endorsed by President Trump and is hoping to wrestle away the GOP nomination from Cheney. Cheney is one of two Republicans on the committee investigating last year's January 6 attacks on the Capitol. Today's debate at Sheridan College is closed to the public for security reasons. However, you can watch it on Wyoming PBS over the air or online or listen on Wyoming Public Radio. Wyoming's GOP candidates for governor also face off tonight at 7. Governor Mark Gordon takes on five candidates, including Brent Bien and Rex Rammel at the middle school in Warland. You can watch this debate via the Washakie County Republican Party of Wyoming on YouTube or Facebook. Judge Katanji Brown-Jackson is sworn into the Supreme Court today as its newest justice. She is the first black woman to sit on the nation's highest court. Meanwhile, the Montana Supreme Court rules a portion of a state law expanding concealed carry on college campuses is unconstitutional. Justices say the Board of Regents has sole authority over firearm policy on state university property. The law would have prevented the university system from having stricter gun laws than the state. Representative Seth Burgley from Joliet sponsored the law in the House. He called the justices' decision the most pro-government, anti-freedom ruling he'd seen. Following the Supreme Court's Roe v. Wade decision, Democrats are calling on President Biden to build abortion clinics on federal lands, but it's not as easy as it sounds. Anything Congress might do regarding abortion funding would need to first get by the Hyde Amendment. The 1976 law bans federal taxpayer dollars from funding abortion services. Still, the House plans to vote to guarantee the right to travel from one state to another for the procedure. The Biden administration is purchasing more than 100 million doses of Pfizer's vaccine for a possible booster campaign this fall. The $3.2 billion deal includes shots for both adults and children and gives the White House the option to buy hundreds of millions of additional doses if necessary. The FDA is currently deciding whether to authorize a new version of the vaccines to better protect against the Omicron variant. And that's today's Leading Look. Hard to believe it's the last day of June, wrapping up on a positive note. Mainly lots of sunshine across the region today with those highs basically in the 70s and 80s. Let's take a look at those projected highs as we get into this afternoon. 82 for our state capital. We'll do that in Missoula as well. Some 70s though, of course. Dillon at 79. We've got Butte at 75 for the high. 77 in Bozeman. Up at Cupbank. You may actually struggle getting out of the 60s. We'll go 71 for your area though. Billings a high near 80 as well as Mile City. Low 80s up there in Jordan. Down in northern parts of Wyoming. We're looking at 70s and 80s for highs today. And for the most part, just a beautiful day today with lots of sunshine. So we're, we are a little cooler. We're behind a cold front, high pressure keeping us dry. But we've got some changes possibly as we head into the long holiday weekend. We'll take a look coming up. Workers are back at the Stillwater Mine this morning after the flood forced it to shut down. It's not a full reopening as just 200 of the more than 1,200 employees have returned. MTN's Alina Howder updates us on the road to recovery. The Stillwater Mine near Nye remains closed because there's no easy way to get there. The floods left a 400-foot gap in the road, but a temporary road has been constructed. The mine is set to open and be fully operational in three to five weeks. The Sabanye Stillwater Mine is getting closer to becoming fully operational each day. But things are actually going great here. I was just up at site today. And that's saying something after the literal roadblocks Mother Nature threw the mine's way. A major bridge to the mine washed away and so did a 400-foot chunk of road. In lieu of having that sort of 400-foot chunk of road, we built a temporary road here and it can get us in and out of the mine um, for our supplies and our people. Heather McDowell has watched a lot happen in a short period of time. Though only 190 of the 1,200 workers were at the mine Wednesday, progress is being made. They're um, doing a lot of things that frankly are sort of a luxury to have the time to do. 
from a maintenance perspective because we're a 24-7 operation. And that's good news, not just for the mine, but homes and businesses up and down Nye Road, like the Fishtail General Store. They got that done really, really quick because this is the hub for everybody to get to the mine. And that's not the only thing that got done quickly. The bridge connecting Absorki to Fishtail washed away, but replacing it was a top priority, and less than two weeks later, a new one now connects the two communities. A bridge also serving as a lifeline to the mine. We were doing contingency planning for it to be out for up to six months. And so it really has greatly improved our getting back up to, to full speed here at the mine. Now just this big roadblock remains, this 400 foot gap just before the mine, but there's hope it too will be fixed sooner rather than later. The county and, and um, everyone has been putting their heads together to figure out the best fix for it. So. I think we're hopeful that, um, you know, it will be before winter. A lot of progress in a matter of just weeks. We've been very impatient, <laughs> but I have to tell you, it's been amazing. In Stillwater County, Alina Howder, MTN News. The process of rebuilding after flood damage can be a lot to manage, and some just aren't aware of how tedious that process can be in most cases, especially if you live along a river that has suddenly decided to change its course. If you plan on rebuilding near a riverbank or waterway, not so fast. There are numerous permits you need to avoid a fine or penalty. The biggest problem we're having right now in both counties is um, people not doing the paperwork. Many Good Samaritans have swooped in to help neighbors, even strangers, in the wake of the floods, not realizing they may be adding to the damage. Sharon Flamettis with the Stillwater and Carbon County Conservation District says one property solution may become another's problem. Taking those large equipment and taking them into the river alters the stream bed. And some big fines could already be being handed out. Heavy equipment operators that operate in stream beds without a permit could be fined. That's one reason the Crowley Fleck law firm set up shop in the Stillwater County Courthouse Wednesday, helping guide people through the process. Everybody is confused about the environmental permitting process because so many different regulatory agencies, state and federal, are involved, that it's just a confusing process. A joint application that was available in Stillwater County Tuesday and Wednesday had seven different permits one may need to apply for. Emergency work can be done immediately before a full permit would need to be processed. The regulatory agencies are here to help, so if you contact them, they will help you, and if you work closely with them, then then folks should not run into any problems. Permitting agencies across the board have now been doing what they can to expedite the approval process after such unprecedented flooding. In the last two weeks, I have gotten more permitting, more applications in than I usually do in a year. A lot of hoops to jump through, but a process that's necessary as Southern Montana looks to rebuild and recover in the best way possible. In Columbus, Haley Monaco, MTN News.